Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Saturday. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. Let me sit up in my chair a little bit more. I hope you guys are having an amazing weekend. I hope it's full of reading, re relaxation, your family, whatever you need to have an amazing weekend. I hope you're getting it. Today started really well for me. I got up, walked the dogs, read my book a little bit, then we went and had brunch with a friend, which was absolutely lovely, and now I'm back. I'm going to do this video, then I'm going to crawl into my bed with my dogs and my book, probably nap a little, read a little. That is the daily plan. Um, but first, let's get this video done because I have some amazing books to share with you. So this is my April book haul. These are all of the books sent to me by publishers over the month of March that I want to share with you. As I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads because there are so many amazing titles in these stacks. Um, but there's a lot, so I better talk fast. As always, order from your independent bookstore, have your library order the book in advance so that people know that you want it in your hands the minute that it comes out. Let's get started and we're going to start actually with a children's book and that is Lumberjills. This is out from Albert Whitman and Company, written by Alexander da Alexandra Davis and illustrated by Katie Hickey. It is the unsung heroines of World War II. So I want to thank very much Albert Whitman and Company for sending me this early copy. Um, Lumberjills is the story of a group of women in the UK that during World War II, um, when most of the men were away fighting in the war, they joined a group to cut down trees and process lumber in order to keep different industries in the UK functioning. And I love books like this that tell a story. This art is just adorable. Let's take a moment. Um, and also tells a story about an unsung group of heroes, heroines in this case, um, that these young children probably would not um, know anything about if this book didn't exist. So I think that's super exciting. So that's Lumberjills, The Unsung Heroines of World War II by Alexandra Davis, illustrated by Kate Hick Katie Hickey. And yeah, adorable. Love it. Everything about it. Okay. The next book is one of my most anticipated releases of 2019, and I have to give a big thank you to my friend Ann Kingman from Random Penguin House for getting me an early copy of The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Now, Colson Whitehead needs no introduction. The Underground Railroad was a train of success, won the Pulitzer and the National Book Award in the same year. If you haven't read Colson Whitehead's backlist before The Underground Railroad, you are really missing out because he is definitely, definitely worth reading all of his work. So, this book comes out July 16th, 2019 from Doubleway, Day, so thank you so much to Anne for getting me an early copy. This is the story of Elwood Curtis in the 1960s. He's a young man that lives in a segregated town in Tallahassee, Florida. He is going to go to a black university, and unfortunately, um, an act occurs where he gets convicted of a crime and sort of derails his entire life. And he winds up being sent to what is called the Nickel Academy in Florida. The Nickel Academy is sort of billed as this facility where you send these young boys and it turns them into productive members of society. But what we really find out is the Nickel Academy is full of abuse and torture, and these uh, young boys are treated horribly. Now, this Nickel Academy is actually based on a true story and a real facility that existed in Florida. When Elwood gets there, he, um, he a firm believer and follower of Dr. Martin Luther King, um, decides that he is going to take one route in how to deal with what's going on in the Nickel Academy. Um, but his roommate and the man who becomes his friend has a different perspective and a different way of dealing with the facility in and of itself. Um, this leads to sort of an event that occurs that changes not only their lives, but the lives of many people and the Academy in and of itself. Um, I don't think much more is needed to be said about this. I think Colson Whitehead is one of the greatest American writers currently writing. And that is The Nickel Boys, Colson Whitehead out July 16th, 2019 from Doubleway. Thank you so much, and I uh, cannot wait to read this. The next book that I'm going to tell you about is by an author that I absolutely adore. She has a dog named Muggle, for goodness sakes. 
So if you don't know that and you don't already love Bianca Marius, you love her now. Um, her book, Hum If You Don't Know the Words, was a huge success, and I know it was my friend Julia's favorite book of 2018, I want to say. And this is her new novel that comes out this year, I want to say in, when does this come out? July. If You Want to Make God Laugh. Um, this is a story of three women. We have a young 17-year-old woman that lives in a squatter's camp outside of Johannesburg, South Africa, um, and she is 17 years old and pregnant, and she is sort of in this world on the bridge, on the brink is a better word, on the brink of civil war in South Africa, and also the AIDS epidemic is just, you know, coming crashing in. We have Ruth, I think her name is Ruth, Ruth, who is a wealthy socialite that seems like she has everything in the world. However, there is a sense of heartbreak. And then we have a young woman who is a disgraced nun named Delia who grapples with a past that she wants to keep buried. This novel is how those three women's lives come and intertwine and yeah. I just read a very glowing review of this in Publishers Weekly, which makes me want to read it even more. You know how I always wait a little bit closer to publication time so I can tell you guys about the books closer to when you can get them? It may be hard. It may be hard to wait till closer to July. I adore Bianca Marius. I adore her books. And If You Want to Make God Laugh comes out July, I think I have a date, 16th, again, 2019. I want to thank Putnam so much for sending me this early copy. I love the art on the front of Bianca's books too. It's just so good. So good. So there you go. Another book that you are definitely going to want to get your hands on. The next book was kindly sent to me by Scribe, and that is Hope Farm by Peggy Frew. Now, this book has been out for a while. It was actually shortlisted for the 2016 Stella Prize in Australia. Peggy Few is an Australian um, writer. So if you are in the UK and Australia, I think you can get this book now. It comes out from Scribe here in the US on August 20th, 2019. Um, this is the story of a young girl and her family in 1985. 1985. Um, her mother and becomes infatuated with a man and they move to Hope Farm, which is a commune. And she, this young girl, um, finally finds friends and a sense of home that she has been missing. Um, and then I think it says here, um, she's just 13, but she's thrust into an unrelenting adult world and the walls begin to trump tumble down. Um, I posted a picture of this on my Instagram the other day and I got so many comments that people said that this book is fantastic. I cannot wait to get to it. I actually really think the cover is great. So that's Hope Farm by Peggy Frew. This is out from Scribe in the U.S. on August 20th, 2019, but it is available currently on Aust in Australia and in the U.K. So there you go. Next is a book that I actually talked about in my book birthdays, but I didn't actually haul last month because it came in after that video, and that is Europa Editions If I Had Two Lives by Abigail Rosewood. This is a debut novel by um, a young woman who tells the story of a Vietnamese woman who comes to America to New York City. Um, while she's a, a young woman in Vietnam, she has a best friend and she befriends a, a soldier. She comes to the U.S and then she feels like or she thinks she runs into someone who reminds her of the soldier and an event occurs, a tragic event, that makes her return to Vietnam. I don't know a whole lot more than that about this book. Actually, I think this, let's talk about gorgeous covers, my goodness. Um, but I do know that I am super excited. Europa never lets me down. So it's If I Had Two Lives by Abigail N. Rosewood out from Europa Editions. And this came out this month, so you can actually get your hands on this. I saw it in a bookstore the other day. So there you go. The next book was actually sent to me by the author, and it is a, a little bit outside my comfort zone, but part of me is super fascinated with it, and I am really going to give it a go, and that is I Just by L.S. Larson. Now, I Just actually stands for the Intergalactic Institute of Science and Technology. This is a futuristic YA novel, and I believe that there is actually an app that you can download that you can be involved with while you read this book. So. I'm going to see how that's going to work. That's something new for me. Look at, I'm, just, I'm, I'm excited. This is a science, uh, science fiction YA novel about an institute that is or, um, orbiting the moon and young kids that go there. Let me see how it says here. It's to educate its students in science and technology, enabling them to pioneer the future and exploration between galaxies. Only the best and brightest become luminaries 
suspend your disbelief and meet us there. I think it sounds really fun. I think it's something different, something that I have never done. I've never read a book with an app and sort of combined them together. Um, and I think if you guys can just take a look, this has got, oh, hopefully that will focus a little bit better, some really amazing artwork on the cover. So I think it sounds really fun um, and different. So that's I Just by L.S. Larson. And um, yeah, this book is actually out already. You can get it and you can get it and then you can uh, download the app and turn it into an experience. The next book, so excited when this showed up in the mail. And this is The Missing of Claire de Lune, volume two in the Mirror Quartet. This is not a um, this is not going to be the final quartet. Uh, and this is by um, Christelle Dabos, translated from the French by Hildegard Cyril. Um, I read The Mirror Thief. Um, I'm sorry. I read the first book in this, The Mirror Visitor. Um, I'm, you know when you have a moment where you're thinking, gosh, am I saying the name of the first book right? It's right up here. Hold on. A Winter's Promise. A Winter's Promise in the Mirror Visitor Quartet. There you go. Sorry for that. That was a lot of complication. This is book two, and I am so excited to go back and spend some time with Ophelia. I don't want to say too much about what this is about, but if you guys remember, this is a YA fantasy series in a world where the, the universe is where the, um, the world shattered and people live on sort of these like floating icebergs. Ophelia in the first book is promised in marriage to a man and moves to his country, his iceberg, and all of the political intrigue. She's kept in hiding. She becomes sort of like this spy. And it was so good. And this is the follow-up. We continue the tale of Ophelia. We learn more about uh, who she is and what she becomes in her new world and about her fiancé and his family. So that's The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Dabos, translated from the French by Hildegard Sorel. This comes out in May 2019 from Europa Editions. I cannot wait. I'm so excited to get into Ophelia's world again. Totally loved The Mirror Visitor Quartet. So I'm excited, excited, excited. Winter's Promise was the first book since I blew that so much in that introduction. Next on the list is Louder Milk, and it says Loud, uh, Louder Milk or The Real Poet or The Origins, The Origin of the World by Lucy Ives. This was sent to me by Soft Skull Press, and I requested this book because I read a fantastic review in Publishers Weekly about it. And I'm going to read you the back of this because I think this is going to be one of those books that challenges form um, and is um, going to be super funny, but also, I think, a satire on a bunch of stuff. So it says on the back, reasons to go to school for writing, free money, i.e. fellowship funding for relatively easy work, i.e. writing poems. I think all the writers are automatically snarky. So I think that that is the satire. Carefree, corn-fed, and maximum approved sexually adventurous undergraduate population. Forget all about the war on terror. Health insurance, footnote, only if actually enrolled. If secretly writing poems on behalf of your more charismatic friend who is enrolled, you will not be covered by health insurance. Amusing, perpetually hungover drunk writing professors and their attractive partners, offspring. Did we mention your classmates are all writing a lot of haiku? Beauty, truth, love. Footnote number two. Doubtful. Given that, as poetry teaches us, when two soulmates meet, the world tends to split in two. I think that sounds super interesting. I think I'm going to laugh really hard. Um, I like this idea of a writer in school writing poetry for someone else who's actually in school for writing poetry. I think that sounds really clever. So, and the review I read in Publishers Weeking, uh, really, really love this. So, that is Louder Milk or The Real Poet, or The Origin of the World by Lucy Ives. I want to thank Soft Skull Press. This comes out May 7th, 2019, which is an important day because it's the day before my birthday. So there you go. Um, the next book on this list is a piece of nonfiction. And when my friend Anne, who I told you sent me the um, Nickel Boys, sent this one, she sent this one and I had no idea about it. But this is so up my alley. I'm going to read a lot about it to you because I think a lot of people are going to really love this. And this is Furious Hours, Murder, Fraud, and the Last Trial of Harper Lee by Casey Sepp. I don't know how to say that last name. 
So this is a true story based on a true crime book that Harper Lee worked on, and I guess she worked on obsessively after finishing To Kill a Mockingbird. She had helped, you know, Truman Capote write um, In Cold Blood, and this was sort of the book that she was researching in order to write her own In True Blood. Now, this is the story of Reverend Willie Maxwell, who is a rural Alabama preacher who was accused of murdering five of his family members for insurance money in 1970. Um, he had a really good lawyer and he got off until he was killed at the funeral of one of the people that he was accused of killing. Now that person who murdered him also got off using the same attorney that the reverend had used. I think that all of that sounds amazing to me. Sitting in the audience this entire time is Harper Lee, who had traveled from New York City to her native Alabama with the idea of writing her version of In Cold Blood. Um, she spent, uh, Lee spent a year in town reporting and many more years working on her own version of the case. Now, Casey brings the story to life from the shocking murders to the courtroom drama to the racial politics of the Deep South. At the same time, she offers a deeply moving portrait of one of America's mostly beloved writers and her struggle with fame, success, and the mystery of artistic creativity. I think that sounds amazing. So this is out from Knopf in May, Furious Hours, Murder, Fraud, and the Last Trial of Harper Lee by Casey Sepp and you just know me because you sent me a nonfiction book and it just speaks to my soul. I will be reading this very, very soon. And I think you all should too. Okay, five more books. You guys know how much I know, love the New York Review of Books. They sent me this book and it's Rock, Paper, Scissors and Other Stories by Maxim Osipov. And it is translated from the Russian. It actually has three translators, Boris Dreliak, Alex Fleming, and Anne-Marie Jackson. Now, Boris is actually the editor of this collection, and it has a preface by Sletvana Alexievich. I probably said that wrong. I did. But she won the Nobel Prize in Literature a few years ago. Now, from what I can gather is um, Maxim Osipov, Osipov is a Russian author who really focuses on the subtlety and how does it put this here? The uh, provincial Russian life. And he really, his stories are very sort of um, Chekhov-like in nature, where he just focuses on the everyday. And I hear from what this back says, which I have never heard of this guy, but the, the blurb is fantastic, is that he really captures an aspect of Russian life. Now, the author is actually himself a cardiac surgeon, I believe, and he did a fellowship in San Francisco. So all of this is coming around. If you are into Russian short stories, if you are into amazing sort of stories about just real people, I think this book is going to be for you. I am, I love New York Review of Books. I think that this is, sounds fantastic. So this comes out, I think it just is coming out this month. I apologize, I don't know the exact date. But thank you to the New York Review of Books for Rock, Paper, Scissors, and Other Stories by Maxim Osipov. This is translated again from the Russian by Boris Dryliak, Alex Fleming, and Anne Marie Jackson. And I think you guys, that's going to be up some of your alleys. Let's be honest. Next is The Farm, and this was kindly sent to me by Random House, written by jo Joanna Ramos. This is a story. Okay, so the farm is a place. It is a place where, you know what, I, I was trying to summarize this in my head and it's not going to be very good. So, nestled in the Hudson Valley is a sumptuous retreat boasting every amenity. Organic meals, private fitness trainers, daily massages. And all of it is free. In fact, you get paid big money, more than you've ever dreamed of, to spend a few seasons in this luxurious locale. The catch? For nine months you belong to the farm. You cannot leave its grounds. Your every move is monitored. Your former life will seem a world away as you dedicate yourself to the all-consuming task of producing the perfect baby for your uber-wealthy clients. Now Jane is an immigrant from the Philippines and a struggling single mother, and she is thrilled to make it through the highly competitive host selection process at the farm. But now she's pregnant, fragile, consumed with worry for her own daughter's well-being, well-being, Jane grows desperate to reconnect with her life outside, yet she cannot leave the farm or she will lose the life-changing fee she'll receive on delivery or worse. This book is 
going to change your mind about the idea of motherhood, money, all of that, sort of that, that culture regarding um, that I, this sort of sounds to me like for fans of clearly The Handmaid's Tale, but also Red, um, Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. Doesn't this sort of have that kind of feel to it? Um, I am super excited for The Farm by Joanna Ramos. Thank you so much to Random House. This also comes out on May 7th, 2019. So not too far to get your hands on it. I, yeah, that speaks to me, speaks to me. Um, my friend, I was telling you, so Anne sent me a number of books and one she included is really something that I wouldn't have expected. And this is coming out from Knopf and this is Someone Who Will Love You in All Your Damaged Glory, stories by Raphael Bob Waskberg. And he is one of the creators of uh, BoJack Horseman, which is a show that my husband absolutely loves and cracks up watching. And this is a collection of short stories and it has so much humor. I was flipping through it before this video and I know I'm not, I can't really read, they ask you not to quote the pre-release copies, but there is a section called short stories, which are like just stories in like a few sentences. You know that uncomfortable laughter you get when something is at one time horribly funny, but in the same time horribly on pointly wrong? There are on it. I was cracking up and at the same time like, whoa. Um, I think this is going to be super fun. Look at how fun that cover is, mind you. Um, I, yeah, I'm excited. So Someone Who Will Love You in All Your Damaged Glory, stories by Raphael Bob Waskberg. Um, this is out by Knopf. It comes out in May as well. I Oh no, sorry, June 2019. Yeah, I'm super. Thank you, Anne. And you made me laugh. And this book is making me laugh, too. So June, right around the corner, too. I saw a review of this on my friend Emily at Possibly Literate's channel. So I had to request a copy of Red, right, Red White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And I'm going to hold that up there. I keep wanting to say McQuestion because for some reason I look at that and that's what I say. This is a YA contemporary gay romance novel. This is the story of um, the first son of the United States. His mother is the president and the son of the British royal family. Um, something happens, they have a fallout, and they have to create sort of this fake relationship while his mother is being re-elected. Of course, there's going to be a romance angle, and um, yeah, everything that comes to term once sort of their relationship is out there. Um, Emily raved about it when I posted this. Um, also, um, uh, Novel Inc. Uh, Maddie also raved about it, and that's Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuistion. I want to thank St. Martin's Griffin. This comes out next month. So if you're looking for a YA contemporary um, LGBTQ plus representation novel, there you go. Red, White, and Royal Blue. There you go. Last but not least in this is The Behavior of Love by Virginia Reeves. This comes out on May 14th, 2019, and I want to thank very, very much <clears throat> Excuse me, is this Pantheon? I think, uh, Scribner for sending me this copy. Um, the Behavior of Love is the story of Dr. Ed. I'm not going to try to say his last name because I will butcher it. He runs a mental health facility with his wife. Him and his wife are trying to have a baby. One day a young girl is admitted to the facility. She has epilepsy and he realizes that she truly does not belong there. As his relationship with her grows and turns into something different, his wife gets a job at the facility and he has to sort of balance that line between professional, personal, and also everything that he wants. The baby with his wife, getting this young woman out of this facility. And it says, can he find a way to, he must weigh his professional responsibilities against his personal ones and find a way to save both his job and his family. A love triangle set in one of the most chaotic, combustible settings imaginable. The behavior of love is an incredibly compulsive, poignant exploration of marriage, lust, and ambition from um, Virginia Reeves, who I think one of her books, if I'm not mistaken, was um, a Man Booker Prize long list, What Work Like Any Other. And I don't know that book, but I think this book sounds fantastic. And so that's Behavior of Love by Virginia Reeves, sent to me by Scribner out May 14th, 2019. 
So I told you this was going to be a long video. So many good books. Do any of these sound good to you? Let's talk about them in the comments below. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, I hope all of these books wound up on your TBR and you come back for a new video again. As always, I wish you happy reading and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!